Now to drive home some of the points that I just made, I would like to show you a few real world examples of architectures that kind of went astray. The first example I want to use is an example from the Linux kernel, actually from an earlier version of the Linux kernel. A research group studied the documentation of Linux and also interviewed several Linux developers. And by doing that, they were able to come up with the software architecture of Linux at different levels of abstraction. So the one that I'm showing you here on the left is the software architecture at the level of Linux main subsystems. So this is the prescriptive architecture of Linux at the level of Linux's main subsystems. So the researchers, after identifying this architecture, they showed it to the developers, and the developers agreed that that was indeed the architecture of the system. The researchers then studied the source code of Linux and reversed engineering its actual architecture. So the architecture as implemented, it's descriptive architecture. And this one here on the right is the result. And as you can see, they found a number of differences or violations between the prescriptive architecture and the descriptive architecture. In particular, if we look at this architecture, we can see that pretty much everything talks to everything else, which is in general not a good thing. And in addition to that, there are also several things that don't really make much sense. For example, the library calls the file system and also the network interface, which doesn't make much sense. Another thing that is kind of weird is the fact that the file system calls the kernel initialization code, which is also a little bit weird. So basically, the bottom line here is that not even the developers realized how the actual architecture of the system was and how it was different from the architecture they had conceived. And in fact, another interesting thing here is the reaction of the developers when they were shown the actual architecture. So basically, they justify the differences by saying things such as, uh, well, you know, it had to be done fast, and therefore I changed it, and then I didn't have time to go back and update the documentation, and things of this sort. And by the way, these are exactly some of the reasons that we mentioned early on in the lesson for the discrepancy between prescriptive and descriptive software architecture. So one last thing that I want to mention here as an aside, and we can get back to that later, is the fact that you can probably clearly show how representing software architectures graphically can be extremely useful because it allows for easily seeing the structure of the system, look at different views, identify problematic points, and so on. And we will see how that can be useful in many cases also later on.